Hi, my name is Trevor Bagnall and today I'm going to be modifying the Segway X2 to modify the lean steer, take it off and replace it with a knee steer. Uh, you might ask why would I do that? Well one, because I can. Two, it's going to be a lot of fun. And three, I want to make this into a mobile camera platform. Let's go. So this is my Segway X2. I've had this machine for about seven years. It's a good, rugged, reliable uh, Segway. It's the off-road model, the X2, versus the on-road model, which would be the i2. And I've had a lot of fun with this machine over the years, chasing the dog around the yard and just putting about and doing some off-roading stuff. This is the off-road model, of course. And I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to do something different with it. So now that I'm doing a lot more video work, I wanted a camera dolly platform that I could basically just use this, but keep my hands free in order to operate a camera. So I've seen some videos on YouTube where um, guys have been using like the Segway 9Bot, which is a smaller version of a personal transporter, but it has a knee steer assembly. So that leaves both hands free. So that's what we're going to set out to do here today and uh, let's go uh, look at some of the components we're going to tear apart. So it should probably go without saying, um, if we're going to modify our segways, we do so at our own personal risk. Uh, we are modifying an engineered product, um, so there are inherent risks in doing that, but if that doesn't deter you, then <laughs> let's look at the next steps. Fortunately for me, I've got a friend who has some spare Segway parts. So uh, he's graciously donated a lean steer to me so that I can use this to uh, modify and cut it down. And that way I don't have to permanently uh, make this modification to my Segway. I'll be able to swap out uh, the new and the old lean steers. So with this old lean steer, I'm going to take and uh, cut down the lower section to reduce some of the height and I'm also going to cut down a, a portion of the top section in order to reduce the overall height such that when it's back in place on the Segway it'll be at the right height to go between my knees. So um, let's go uh, start cutting and hacking and slashing. So the first step is going to be removing the lean steer obviously and in order to do that we want to make sure the Segway is powered down so it doesn't do the funky chicken when we uh, move and uh, take off the lean steer. So we're going to kill the power. And tools for this are uh, extremely uh, uh, simple. It's a 5 millimeter Allen wrench and basically there's a bolt down inside of there that has the, uh, the hex head uh, Allen uh, wrench head to that and you're just basically going to undo that. So it takes a little bit of force to unscrew that and then that bolt is going to come all the way out. Okay, once that bolt is loosened, uh, in most cases it'll pop out a little bit and you get your fingers on it, but uh, you want to take your lean steer and bend it off to the side and you'll hear that little click. Okay. Uh, if you haven't taken the lean steer off of your Segway uh, in the past, it can be a little stiff and in that case you just basically lean that over and give it a little tap with a rubber mallet. And that will basically knock out these wedges that hold the lean steer in place. Now doing this on a bit of a slope. Um, then, oh, one of those wedges is still caught in there, so. There's the second wedge, and then the lean steer basically just comes right off the Segway. So of course we want to put these wedges and the bolt in a safe spot. We are going to be reusing them, of course. And now we've got our lean steer in our hands that we can go and modify. And we're just going to set the Segway aside for the time being. Okay, let's go hack and slash. So after we have the lean steer taken off of the, uh, the Segway, we want to take apart 
the top and bottom half. So we basically completely undo the tension adjuster here for setting the height of the handlebar. Of course, it's uh, got a little bit of wiggle room as to how high you can set the bar on the Segway. But now we're gonna take that completely out. And you notice on the inside, we have this plastic collar which sits up near the top on the, uh, the other piece. But we also have these plastic pieces that are, um, they're press fit on there with a little couple of dimples inside of that, which basically slot into those holes. So after we cut this, we're gonna to have to recut those holes or redrill those holes a little further up so that we can remount these. Otherwise that top bar would have a little bit of slop because this is allowing these to fit tight to the shell, but still allow, I'll put that back on there. That allows that to fit tight to the shell without a whole lot of slop once that and the collar are in place. So that'll be quite important to make sure we have back in the build after we've done cutting the two pieces. So here we can see in a side-by-side -side comparison of the lower and upper sections. The, uh, the lower section I've probably cut off close to eight inches and on the upper section of cut off about six and a half inches. And of course, that's gonna vary based on uh, how tall you are and uh, how high you wanna make this. But uh, the only advice I'd give here is uh, don't cut off too much too soon. And if you have to make a, a couple of cuts, then uh, do it that way. But uh, in any case, uh, this is just the height that uh, seemed to work best for me. So uh, now I've got all the pieces cut. And on the top piece here, I've removed the old handle and I've taken a piece of a bicycle handlebar and fit it back in there. So it fits basically just perfectly in the, in the old handle. And I've left about three quarters to seven eighths of an inch sticking out on either side. And I'll show you what that's for in a moment. But in the meantime, we put the uh, that plastic collar back in place over top of the, the handlebar there. And then those two plastic pieces we're going to snap them back in right over the new holes that I've drilled and they'll snap in like that. Now, normally the Segway handle would go in like that, but in this case, I'm going to flip that around 180 degrees when I put it back together. And the reason for that is uh, I want this back closer towards my legs. The other thing I've done as well is I've gone ahead and I've put some match drilled holes all the way through the handlebar because that's going to be bolted together now. There's no tension adjustment knob on this anymore. That part of the, the handlebar got cut out. So in order to keep this thing stable and steady, we're just going to put two bolts right through there. So the next thing you're going to need is something to mount to the top end of that lean steer to put that goes between your legs basically to steer the, uh, the Segway. And in my case, uh, I... Uh, I had my old bicycle uh, with the, uh, the uh, this was the, uh, the racing mount and uh, uh, it would seem to me to be just the right shape and there's a set of cups that basically fit on there that uh, your, your elbows would uh, fit into, uh, but those are now going to become uh, uh, pads for the front of the legs. So I always told my wife I was going to get back and reuse that bicycle. What she didn't understand it was it was just going to be for spare parts. And here's some more of those spare parts. So uh, these are the pads that uh, came off of this. Um, originally I had this on the Segway uh, and uh, it was quite okay, but uh, the, the distance from the pad to where this curve started uh, put this right at the back of your leg all the time. And so uh, after a long ride that would become a bit uncomfortable. So uh, I took the parts that I needed off of that and then with a few copper fittings, I basically just reassembled uh, a similar device. Uh, these are the mounts that uh, mount off the handlebars uh, from the original uh, racing bars and uh, just some copper fittings at the hardware store and soldered them together. And the reason why I made it this shape, of course, is, uh, of course, you still want this for the, uh, the front of the leg, but I also wanted a little bit of flare out at the back so that when you're slowing down and you lean backwards on the Segway, you just don't you know, go completely off that. You got something to bear up against. Okay, so let's put this together on the modified lean steer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, assemble the lean steer assembly to the knee steer assembly. 
So normally this would basically, uh, oh, backwards, sorry. So just fit on there basically just like that. And then we have all this hardware to attach it. Okay, so there's a couple of saddles that fit in there. And then fit that up into there. Then we're going to fit the top half of that little saddle on there. And then these basically just lock in on top of that. And if you go to any bicycle shop, they have all this uh, type of gear that you can buy. And they may even have just the spare parts that you need. Um, as opposed to having to buy the entire assembly, but uh, Again, this is just one that I had kicking around and didn't mind uh, cutting apart and modifying. So I'm going to put that bolt through there. I'll put the nut on the top. And that bolt through that side. And the nut on top. And let's go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, we'll fine tune the uh, up and down of that. And now we're ready to go put that on the Segway. So again, just a reminder that before you rush out and do this, of course, I have a spare lean steer that a friend gave me and that allows me to interchange these back and forth. This isn't a permanent change for me, but uh, unless you've got that spare handle, of course, this will be a permanent change after you've done this because there's no going back after you've cut this down. Okay, so now it's time to uh, put the handle back on the Segway. Now, this can be a little bit tricky. First time you go to do this, uh, but essentially this is just going to slide back over the, the frame there. The real trick to this is uh, not getting that up right tight to the end. It's actually going to leave just a little bit of a gap there between the lean steer and the main body of the assembly. And then these wedges go back in. Uh, now the one with the countersunk hole normally was on the right side of the Segway here. And those will just slide in and they kind of tend to self-align them, but getting this bolt through and into the far wedge takes a little bit of fiddling and farting. And sometimes you got to jiggle the handle just a little bit in order to get that started in there. Um, luckily for me, that started in pretty easy that time. But the first time I tried that, I think it took me about 45 minutes jiggling and farting with that to try and get it to uh, to line up. Now one of the key things when you're putting this back on is uh, this can get a little bit offline like that as you see uh, you heard that click as the the wedges shook around there a little bit and now that's not of course vertical so you want to make sure that when you're tightening this up that that is standing as straight up as possible and then give that a good crank tight and then after you've taken it out and uh, rode around on a little bit, you want to go back and you want to check that again just to make sure that that hasn't loosened off if there hadn't been any uh, sort of the wedges sticking where they shouldn't have been. And now there's a specified torque setting that you're supposed to torque that to, but I can't remember it is what it is right offhand, so I'm just going to make sure it's good and tight. And there we are. We're ready to go for a ride. Now I'm just going to Turn the Segway on there. And let it sit there in standby mode. And we'll go give this thing a try. Okay, so now we're ready to give this thing a whirl. Uh, I recommend holding on to the knee steer while you climb up on top of the Segway, just for stability. And, of course, getting a bit of a feel for back and forth without that handle up here 
Uh, but again, back and forth is just forward and back have the weight on your on your heels and toes. And in order to steer the Segway, normally you would turn the lean steer to the right in order to turn right, but in this case, left leg is gonna basically just turn in in order to turn to the right and then to turn to the left, of course, the other knee. So let's give it a spin. Turning can be quite smooth. And then for slaloming, it's just a matter of really leaning the entire body. And by the fact that you're leaning your body, that, that leg will lean into the lean steer and turn you in the direction that you're basically leaning. So. Now I've had this modification done for about a month now and uh, you know I've gotten quite comfortable to this and, and now I prefer this mode of the Segway over the full handle. Of course, uh, my wife who also likes to drive the Segway, uh, she doesn't like this configuration so much so I have the handle on uh, for her when she wants to drive the Segway and uh, anytime that I'm going to use it I'll swap out and I'll put the, the lean steer on, or the knee steer on. And uh, I've done a couple of jobs with video cameras to date. Um, using this and I'll throw some footage of that in here uh, in just a moment. Okay so in this clip I'm walking with the camera mounted on a gimbal walking up a pathway it's uh, slightly uneven in terms of level uh, but it's very noticeable in the up and down motion that you can see in the footage even though I'm walking with a bended knee and trying to eliminate as much of that up and down motion as possible it's still discernible in the, the video and in the, in the motion capture. And in the second example clip, uh, this is now driving up the same pathway with the Segway, with the knee steer. And basically, again, this is gimbal mounted, but now the hands are free and all the vertical motion is basically eliminated by the fact that you're riding on the Segway. You've got a little bit of give in the suspension and uh, uh, you can keep your knees bent while driving the Segway and really no problems at all in obtaining really good smooth footage. So in this clip, I was driving over grass, uh, very uneven terrain, uh, and then uh, trying to capture footage of a, a Segway tour group. And then here's another shot. Uh, now I shot this at high frame rate and then used that in order to do some slow-mo, but even at the uh, higher frame rates, uh, which I wanted to show specifically, uh, I'm still getting very smooth motion uh, with the, the camera and you can see we're we're driving over a boardwalk so there's a lot of uh, clackety clack as you go over all the different boards here in this shot and then the same shot when it's slowed down uh, so this uh, shot at 120 frames a second and then slowed down to 30 frames a second basically so uh, four to one slow motion and uh, you can see how buttery smooth uh, the imagery becomes uh, now slowing it down of course is going to give you a lot of that in the base but uh, uh, but just uh, as you can saw from the full speed motion uh, footage uh, still there wasn't a lot of shake and, and really smooth uh, footage using the, the Segway and having the hands free. So everybody that's it for this video if you if you liked it uh, please give it the big thumbs up uh, if you didn't like it give it the big thumbs down and please leave some comments below as to what you think of the uh, configuration and uh, if there's any other X2 owners out there that are thinking about this, uh, drop me a line and let me know uh, how did your build go. So until next time guys, uh, I'm Trevor Bagnell. Have a good one and thanks for watching.